Welcome to Kingdom Now. I'm John Carmichael, and today we are going to be releasing a powerful revelation concerning your marriage. And we want to believe God with you. We're going to be looking at a story found in the book of Genesis, especially chapter 29, in which Jacob was married to Rachel and to Leah. And the marriage between Jacob and Leah, it had started out rough. It was not destined in the natural for success. But I want to show you from the Word of God how that God turned that around. God wants to turn your marriage around. And I believe over the next few minutes and the next few programs, you're going to get some information of how to walk into a miracle in your marriage. Maybe you're not even married and you're believing God for a spouse. You're going to get information that I believe is going to help you pick the right spouse, be able to have information that God can use in your life to turn your marriage around or to give you the marriage that you're believing God for. So you want to make sure that you're watching, get a pencil and piece of paper, and it's going to be a powerful revelation in your life. So don't go away. Kingdom Now. We'll be right back. away from the family burial plot. He carried Leah and said, I'm going to bury you right by me. Friends, I believe that was a sign. It was a sign that God put a love in Jacob's heart for Leah that he didn't have before. And I believe that God can put a love in your marriage, whether it had ever been there in the first place or not. Maybe you feel like that there was never love in your marriage, that you got married for all the wrong reasons. God is the source of love for your marriage. The third thing that I believe that caused a miracle to take place in Jacob and Leah's wedding, marriage, is the third point is this, never, never quit. There has to be something on the inside of you that says, I am in this for the long haul. Now, by me setting the anchor point, we talked about that first. Set the anchor point. Number two, we talked about look to the source of love. And number three, we're going to say never quit. What I mean is this. There has to be something on the inside of you that says, I have made a decision right now that quitting is not an option. We know that Jacob kept going with Leah even though he did not love her. And maybe some of you are in Jacob's point. You're married to somebody you don't love. Maybe you're the one that says, I don't love this person. What are you supposed to do? Don't quit. Maybe you're Leah and you're, you love your spouse, but your spouse doesn't love you. What do you do? Don't quit. They set the anchor point. They kept the source of love and they obeyed God. You need to say, you know what? I'm not a quitter. I'm not giving up. The Bible talks about people who are able to endure till the end. This walk with God is about people, is with people who can stay in something and not quit. This is so foreign to people's ideas. We quit church. We quit our job. We quit many things because we get tired of them. They stop um, exciting us. We, we have a mindset of quit. When I'm, when I'm no longer excited about it, when I'm no longer thrilled with it, I'll quit. Um, I lead life groups or Bible studies and uh, outside of the church services. And, you know, it's amazing to me how that people... Because they get a little bored with something, they quit. Some people, they'll stay with something as long as they're excited. They will stay with something as long as there's something in it for them. But once it's, the zeal goes away, once the, the excitement goes away, once they stop feeling good about it, they develop a quit mentality. And I'm telling you today, that you have to develop a mindset, I'm not a quitter. This race is not for, as the saying goes, the swift or the strong, but it's for those who will endure till the end. There is a special promise that I believe happens in the life of people 
who decide I'm not a quitter. I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to back down. If you have inside of you a mind that quits, you'll quit on your marriage. If you have a mindset that you've not trained yourself to keep putting one step in front of the other, left, right, left, right, if you've not trained your mind to do that, trained your body, you'll quit on your marriage. You know, if I would speak to young people, one of the criteria that I would look at at a person who is not married and you want to marry them and they're a potential spouse, you need to look at something, are they quitters? Are they people that when the going gets tough or when, when they stop getting excited about something, they quit very easily? Because if they quit easily on other things, they're going to quit easily on you. And you need to look at yourself. Have I been a quitter? Have I developed a resume of quitting things very easily? When I look at people who I want to bring on staff with me or I want to serve with me, one of the greatest uh, characteristics that I look for is can they endure? Are they, do they have longevity? But if I see that they're jumping from one church to the next, every two years they're jumping to a church, or every so often they're, they quit this and they quit that, and they're unfaithful here, and they can get excited for a moment, but they drop back. I don't want to serve with that person. I don't want to commit myself to that person. Why? Because they're a quitter. You don't want to be a quitter. You need to have in your mindset then unless there is a biblical reason for you to leave that marriage, you're saying, I'm not quitting. I'm not giving up. I'm going to stay with them. Here's what the Bible says, and we've read this earlier in another context, but I want to read it in 1 Corinthians seven ten. He says, now to the Mary, I command you, not I, but the Lord, the wife is not to depart from her husband. And then he goes on at the end of verse 11, and the husband is not to divorce his wife. The Bible says that there needs to be a mindset inside of you. I am in this for the long haul. When you look at the Bible's definition of love, it says it is long-suffering. One of the characteristics of love is that it knows how to suffer long long suffering. I like to extend that word long out because a lot of people believe long suffering is short suffering. No, when the Bible says love is long suffering, it means long suffering. And if you're going to tap into the power of God, the miracle in your marriage, you're going to have to develop a mindset. I'm long suffering. I don't quit. I don't give up. I'm not walking out of here. I don't care how I feel. I don't care what that other person's doing to me. I am staying in this. And that's what love does. True love says this. Regardless of how I feel or what you do, I'm going to stay in love with you. What do some people do in their marriage? They say, no, as long as I feel like I'm in love with you, I'm going to stay with you. But as soon as I stop feeling it, as soon as you make me mad enough, I'm out of here. Or they say, as soon as you stop doing it, you're doing wrong, I don't like what you're doing, you leave the underwear on the floor, you don't brush your teeth right, you're not doing this, you're not doing the housework, you're not saving money like I want to, you spend too much, whatever reason. Once they start having an action that you don't like, you're going to leave. That's not Bible love. Bible love says this, even if I don't feel like it, I'm going to love you. Some days I feel like it, some days I don't. Doesn't matter, I'm in this. Uh, some days you're doing exactly what I want you to do, spouse, and some days you don't. But regardless of what you do, I'm staying in that marriage. I'm, I'm staying in that marriage. And I like to point out three things about love that you need to put in your marriage, or, or let me say take out of your marriage. Number one, you need to take out of your marriage demands. Number two, you need to take out of your marriage disrespect. And number three, you need to take out of your marriage disagreements. Let me be very quick with these, and we could go at these a long time. But number one, demands. What do I mean by demands? Well, outside of what the Bible demands your spouse to do, you need to take off all demands and expectations of that person. What do I mean? A lot of times people say, well, 
you know, you've got to put your clothes in the right way. I demand you to do it this way. I demand you to do it that way. You're going to do it my way or, or I'm going to uh, retaliate against you. Other than demands that the Bible puts on all of us as believers, you're going to have to take demands out of your marriage. When you demand that a person do something or not do something, that is not going to create love. That's going to destroy love. Number two, you're going to have to remove disrespect. I see uh, marriage people do this all the time. They make fun of their spouse. They treat their spouse in ugly ways, especially in front of people. They allow a culture of disrespect where they will respect people, maybe on the job or at church, but come home and the way they talk to their spouse, they wouldn't talk to anybody else that way, but they'll talk to their spouse that way. They'll say mean and nasty, ugly things to each other that they wouldn't dare say to somebody at work or somebody on the street. It's a culture of disrespect. Friends, you're never going to walk in love if you are disrespecting your spouse in any way. And number three, disagreements. Friends, I'm not saying that there's not times you're not going to see eye to eye because if you've got two intelligent people, two or more intelligent people in a room, they're going to be able to look at the same situation with the same goal but have a different way to get there. That's normal. But what I'm saying to you is this culture, this, this atmosphere of constant bickering, constant fighting, where we allow that is normal. Sometimes I'll see, you know, a, a maybe a couple that's dating and they're fighting and people will make this comment, man, they fight like they're married. Ha, ha, ha. They fight like they're already married. Ha, ha, ha. It's not funny. But what they're alluding to is this. Most marriages are characterized by fussing, fighting, and strife. That's what they're characterized as. And we looked at that as normal. It's not normal, friends. It should not be normal in our lives. It might be normative, but it's not normal for a healthy marriage means that it may be something that you experience and that you see experience. Maybe your mom and dad fought all the time. Your grandparents fought all the time. So you think, well, I'm going to allow that. If you want the power of God in your marriage, you're going to have to destroy the atmosphere of disrespect. You're going to have to destroy the atmosphere of disagreement. You're going to have to destroy the atmosphere of demands that you're placing on the other person. I remember the Lord spoke to me in concerning the area of demands where I was uh, telling my wife what to do and how to do it. And I had to realize that I am not her father. I'm not there to tell her what she can do or how she can do it. That's not what I'm there. I'm there to be her lover. I'm there to be her supporter. I'm there to be her biggest cheerleader. I'm not there to get her to conform to my will. No, I am there to love her, to be good to her in the name of the Lord. And so you have to develop that mindset that I'm not going to quit. Even if they're not doing what I want them to do, I'm going to remove that demand. I'm not going to quit. Even if I want to be disrespectful to them, no, I'm going to respect them. I'm going to love them. I'm going to be good to them. I'm not going to quit even if we don't see eye to eye and there's disagreement. No, I'm not walking in that. I'm walking in love. And friends, that's not easy. But if you will make that decision to say, look, I'm not going to place demands on you even if I want to. I'm not going to disrespect you even if you deserve it. And I'm not going to walk in disagreement with you. And you really draw that line in the sand. Friends, it opens up the power of God. And the fourth and final point is this, is that you've got to learn to forgive each other of everything. Forgive everything. So what are our points? Number one, we look, uh, we set the anchor point. Number two, we look to God as the source of love. Number three, we're never, never going to quit. And number four, we forgive everything. Leah had to forgive Jacob. Jacob, because Jacob loved another woman. What, what did Leah have to forgive?
You're watching Kingdom Now. The message in which you're listening to today is called Lion Ugly, the Miracle Marriage. And I want to give this message to you free of charge. Email us at info at evangelnorth.net. That's I-N-F-O at evangelnorth.net. Give us your name and address and we will rush a copy of this message to you that could be a blessing to you or maybe you know someone whose marriage is in trouble and they need help. I believe that information found within this message can turn that marriage around. You can also call us at 502-413-0115. Dial extension 2 and leave your name and information and we will give this to you. But also, for a gift of any size, if you believe in the message of Kingdom Now and can help us, we want to also, in addition to giving you the message, The Miracle Marriage, we want to also give you a book called uh, Seven Characteristics of a Godly Marriage. It's written by Dr. Bob Rogers. And if you will give us that information, your information at the email address or by phone, we're going to give this to you for a gift of any size, as a way of saying thank you for supporting Kingdom Now. Now, Kingdom Now can be seen here at 21.3 The Light, or you can go online at WBNA21.com, click The Light, and then scroll down the ministries. You'll see Kingdom Now with Evangel North Church, and you can share this with people, and I encourage you to do it. Let people know about the program. Let people know on your Facebook, your Twitter, whatever social media that you have in your life, because if it's been a blessing to you, let it be a blessing to somebody else. So help us share the word, Kingdom Now, present it to your family and friends, and we want to thank you for watching. Jacob. Jacob, because Jacob loved another woman. What, what did Leah have to forgive? Jacob loved Rachel, not Leah. Jacob thought Rachel was the prettier one, not Leah. So Leah had to forgive Jacob. Leah had to forgive Jacob for not loving her. Leah had to forgive Jacob for thinking her sister was prettier than her. She had to forgive him. Jacob had to forgive. Jacob had to forgive Leah for being part of the deception. That marriage night when Jacob thought he was marrying Rachel but married Leah. And Leah was part of that deception. Leah was part of deceiving Jacob. And Jacob ended up marrying uh, Leah by deception. Well, friends, I'm going to tell you, at some point, Jacob forgave Leah. Friends, you and I need to learn to forgive each other. You're not going to have a successful marriage if you don't learn how to forgive. The book of Ephesians chapter 4 says this. It says, Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, just as God in Christ forgave you. What does it mean to be tender-hearted there in Ephesians 4.32? Ephesians 4.32 says, Not only forgive, but be tender-hearted. What does that mean? Well, if you look at the ba uh, skin of a baby, you will notice that it is what we call tender. It's, it, it knows every touch. It's smooth. It's easily um, bruised. It is tender. It has to be treated and lotioned up. It has to be nurtured. It's tender. Why is it tender? Well, it's tender because it's not had atmospheric outside environment hit it. But you and I, our skin gets tougher. As we get older, as the sun hits our skin and other injuries take place, of course, as you work with your hands, you will develop even a callus there where you're working in certain places it will develop. That is anything but tender. In fact, in calluses, you can uh, put something in a callus and you won't even feel it. I guess I'll tell this story for some of you. This might be gross, but as a kid, I had developed calluses on my hands. And one time, uh, my brother and I took straight pins and just stuck them through the calluses on our hands. And we walked up to mom, our mom, and showed them to her. Well, of course, that was a gruesome scene, but it didn't affect us. It didn't even bleed. It didn't even hurt. We couldn't even tell because the, skin, the, the, the pin was going through the callus. 
That callus could no longer fill. It wasn't tender. But when you have a place in your hand or your skin that's tender, it fills everything. It's not been touched. It's not acting on a hurt because it's not been hurt. A callus is developed because of past hurts. A tender, places that are tender have no hurt. They've not been touched. So the Bible says this, you and I are to be tender hearted, simply meaning that we are to live today as though we were not hurt yesterday. Too many marriages are a result today of a hurt that happened yesterday, last week, last month, last year, 10 years ago, 50 years ago, something that took place all the way back then and they're still bringing it up today and then they wonder why there's no power in their marriage. They wonder why God's not doing anything because you're disobeying the word of God. You're still holding something over their head. I don't care if it happened 15 minutes ago. You have to live today as if that person never hurt you. You have to live today as though that person never did anything, said anything. You're going to live tender hearted. Not only are you going to go through the arbitrary act of, of forgiveness, but here's how you know you're walking in Bible forgiveness. There's going to be a tenderness of heart where you're not treating that person like they cussed you out yesterday. You're not treating that person like they did something to you last week. You're not still mad at that. You're not still going to begin to calculate your actions and attitude toward them because of something that happened way back when. No, you're living today as though yesterday never happened. That's what true Bible forgiveness is. It's a tenderness of heart where I'm not living a calloused heart, where I'm, I'm going to feel today and act today based on wounds of yesterday. No, I'm going to get rid of my wounds of yesterday. I'm going to get rid of my calloused heart, and I'm going to walk with a tenderness of heart. I'm going to decide that I'm going to treat you and have an attitude toward you that's as if yesterday never happened. That is a tender heart. And so here we are, here we are at a point where Jacob, Jacob had a mir miracle in his marriage with Leah. And I'm closing this by saying this, Rachel was buried by the road, Leah was buried by Jacob. Jacob, he didn't love her, she was unloved, he was deceived, she had lots to forgive. This marriage, she was ugly, some believe. Lying, ugly marriage. And yet God turned it around. He did it. Now I'm not telling you today that God guarantees you a result because the Bible says you don't know whether you're going to save that marriage or not. But what we can do is put principles in to tap into the power of God and if you will come into alignment with God, God can work in your marriage. God turned it around for Jacob. He loved Leah. And I believe, my friend, God can turn it around for you in the name of Jesus. Oh, that was a powerful revelation that I know that God is using in your life. And I'm just praying that it's been a blessing to you. And I know that it can be a blessing to many people. And I want to make something available to you. This message is entitled, Lion Ugly, The Miracle Marriage, in which Jacob and Leah had a marriage that was destined to fail, doomed to destruction, but yet somehow, some way, God turned it around. There's principles found within this message. Lion Ugly, The Miracle mar Marriage, that God was able to, to give to you and I to turn our marriage around or maybe to give us information on who we're to choose if we're single. So I want to give this to you free of charge. I'm asking you if you would to email us info, that's info at evangelnorth.net info at evangelnorth.net or you can call us 502-413-0115 502-413-0115 
502-413-0115. Dial extension 2 and we will have someone to answer that phone or you can leave a message and what we will need is your name and address and we will be able to send this message to you lying ugly it can help you it can help your marriage or maybe you want to sow it into somebody else's life that can help them and so if you will contact us we will rush you this message and it'll be a great blessing now for those of you who can help us for a gift of any size I want to in addition to that I want to give you a book by Dr. Bob Rogers called Seven Characteristics of a Godly Marriage. This book has been influential in helping people. It will be a great guide to go right along with the message, Lying Ugly. This book that Pastor Bob wrote uh, is going to give you keys that's going to be able to help your marriage. And for a gift of any size, we're going to give this, we're going to send this to you. You can cut, use the same information. Email us at info, that's info at evangelnorth.net, or call us, 502-413-0115, dial extension 2, leave us your name and address, and we will get these to you, and we want to thank you for supporting. Of course, you can also go online to give and give the same information. If you'll go to evangelnorth.net, evangelnorth.net, and click the online giving button, and if you will put in the notes... Uh, lying uh, Ugly, The Miracle Marriage, Lying Ugly, The Miracle Marriage, put in there that you watch the Kingdom Now show. We will know that you're giving for this, and we will give this to you, and it'll be a great blessing to your life. I also want to encourage you to come out uh, to Evangel North Church, located in Clarksville, Indiana. Our address is 1732 Thames Drive. 1732 Thames Drive there in Clarksville. It's right off of the Veterans Parkway and Green Tree Boulevard. You'll recognize the Bass Pro Shop there in Clarksville. Our service times are Sunday at 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. and Wednesday nights at 7. And we encourage you to come at Evangel North Church. We believe you belong. You'll see that phrase mentioned several times at the church. We just believe that God wants people to be able to come to a body of believers. And we believe that Evangel North will be a great blessing to you. Great ministries for you, for your family. Opportunities for you to activate your gifts, your talents, and your interests. For you to belong with small groups and begin to cultivate your walk with God at Evangel North. Again, we encourage you to come out Sundays and Wednesdays and it'll be a great blessing to you. It's been our honor to bring to you Kingdom Now. It's been Ministry of Evangel North Church and I know that it's been a great blessing to you. We encourage you to share this with people at Facebook, Twitter, your family, your friends. You can view it right here on Channel 21.3 The Light. You can go online WBNA21.com Click on the light and then you can scroll down the ministries, view this program anytime that way. God bless you and thank you for watching Kingdom Now.